So in our previous TED Talk, Steve and I talked about how we can activate a negative, fearful memory in the mouse brain using light. And today, we decide, why don't we just flip things around and talk a little bit about happy, positive memories? So here is one example. After our last talk, I was calling home to talk to my parents back in China. So at the end of the conversation, my dad said in Chinese, by the way, we watched your TED talk the other day. I was like, 可是你们不懂英语啊? which means, but you guys do not even speak English. <laughs> yes, my dad said, but we watched it anyway. Of course, that makes me really happy. <laughs> Similarly, my entire family in El Salvador was watching our talk, but what I didn't know was that they were actually watching it live, and I'm actually kind of glad I didn't know that because it probably would have given me a massive heart attack. <laughs> Speaking of heart attacks, it also turns out that my ex-girlfriend, who was originally my motivation for wanting to erase memories in the brain, was also... <laughs> it turns out she was also watching our talk live. And as an update, I'd actually like to officially announce that she and I are still exes. And, <laughs> and there's literally 0% chance of that ever changing. Now, unlike breakups, positive memories are things we all cherish. We've all mentally time-traveled back to moments that enrich our lives. Whether it's the Red Sox winning the World Series, a particular vacation in Cape Cod, or our first puppy love experience. Positive memories define our relationships and literally pump our bodies with physiological cocktails of pleasure. But it turns out they might also be helpful in counteracting some negative emotions, or even blunted feelings, which, when taken to their extreme, can begin to define some psychiatric illnesses, such as depression. So what would happen if we used our technology to try to reactivate positive memories in the brain to try to suppress some of the symptoms associated with depression? So let's first start by activating a positive memory. Well, Steve and I have shown that we can activate a negative memory in the brain. Recently, another collaborating team in the lab has also shown that we can also activate a memory associated with a positive experience. So what positive experience, you might ask? Well, it just turned out that for a male mouse, meeting a female mouse is surprisingly positive. <laughs> so if we put a male mouse in a <laughs> test chamber, then introduce another female mouse in, then this male mouse will, let's just say, actively explore this new companion immediately. If you've ever been to a bar at 1.30 in the morning, you know exactly what this behavior looks like. <laughs> well, yeah. So, Using our system, we can actually find and label the brain cells that are active during this positive experience. And turn out, many of them are located in the center of the brain, which is in involved in learning memory called the hippocampus. And using molecular biology tools, we can also make these cells responding to pulses of blue light. So later, we can shine light into the brain to activate these cells, hopefully to bring back this positive memory. So let's test by first put our male mouse into a test box with a green side connect to the white side. If we were to put a female mouse on the green side, you can imagine the male mouse will probably spend most of its time hanging out there. But instead of putting the real female mouse in, if whenever the male mouse enters the green side, we turn on the light to activate this positive memory, Turned out, the mouse will also spend most of its time hanging out there. So this tells us that indeed, the mouse will also find this activated, positive memory rewarding. So to us, this seemed like a potentially powerful new way to intervene with some cognitive abnormalities. Now, it turns out that in animals, there's some pretty nifty ways of generating a limited but important number of these cognitive abnormalities to give us animal models of psychiatric disorders. So to study symptoms of depression, for example, we can quantitatively measure things like motivation to approach naturally rewarding stimuli in the world, such as food, sex, sugar water, and so on. So let's take the sugar water example. If we give healthy mice the choice between sugar water and regular water, they actually show a strong preference for the sugar water about 80% of the times. So they simply like it better. Whereas if we take our animals that show some depression-like symptoms and we give them the choice between sugar water and regular water, they actually only show a 50-50 preference, meaning they don't care for one any more than they care for the other. 
This is what we consider the inability to experience pleasure, which is one of the many constellations of symptoms associated with depression. So let's put our positive memory reactivation to the test. What we can do now is we can take these animals that show these depression-like symptoms, and we can give them the choice between sugar water and regular water, but while simultaneously using light to reactivate a positive memory. And when we do that, their preference for sugar water immediately rockets up to 80%, which is basically to the same level as healthy animals. So in other words, using light to reactivate a positive memory had a profound antidepressant-like effect. So now the bad thing about working with animal model is you cannot ask them what they are thinking. <laughs> Trust me, I tried, they never answered. <laughs> but on the other hand, the good thing is, actually we can look directly into the animal's brain and see how the brain cells are doing. So we know that in both human and the mice, new neurons are born every single day in the brain. Past animal studies have shown that Depression-like symptoms can reduce the number of new neurons in the brain, while antidepressant treatments such as antidepressant drugs and exercise can boost up the number of new neurons in the brain. That's why we decided to take a look into the mouse brain and see what happens if we reactivated a positive memory repeatedly. So what we found is if we activate positive memory repeatedly in the mouse brain, Besides the behavior changes, we can also see increased number of new neurons in the brain. Now we have two independent measurements of the effect of activating a positive memory. And these two are also nicely correlated in that in an animal that has more new neurons in the brain, chances are they also perform better in our assay. So this gives us the confidence that indeed something great is happening after we activated a positive memory in the brain. And to me, this makes perfect sense. After all, psychiatric disorders like depression are just as physical as, say, a broken leg. Broken legs give rise to broken locomotion. Broken brains give rise to broken thoughts. You can't just think away a broken leg, and you can't just instantly force yourself to be happier to treat depression. It's so much more complicated than that, but both processes here require physical intervention. Our physical intervention was to go directly into the brain and force the reactivation of these brain cells that were associated with a positive memory, which is a very different way of tackling a multi-billion dollar problem that's been around for as long as we've had the ability to feel. So to end, it turns out that the process of doing research has two key components. There's the unforgiving roller coaster that's leading up to a discovery, which admittedly is a process that can sort of feel like an airplane is perpetually parked in the face of your self-esteem. And then there's the part where you actually make a discovery when the experiments actually work, which is a process that can feel like a double-thick Oreo milkshake multiplied by world peace. <laughs> but both processes are bound together by research. Research is what happens when you systematically navigate onto the edge of what is known and onto the edge of what is unknown, and you push just a little bit further. Shu and I are cartographers of the brain's memory systems, and to us, the neural landscape ahead gives us every reason to be optimistic. Thank you. Thank you.